I've been a mom. I, I know how, how babies work, but having a baby who wasn't gaining weight and who was on oxygen, and it, it really, it scared me. She had a variety of complications. She just was sick, couldn't breathe on her own, and had a few other things that we were working on. We were really, really surprised because we weren't expecting anything. He's our fourth child, and the other three were just normal, healthy babies. So the early intervention programs for Easter Seals and all throughout the state of Utah, we serve children that are birth to three and uh, children that have some sort of developmental delay or disability. We do developmental assessments in speech and language, gross motor, fine motor, cognitive, social, emotional, and vision and hearing if the child needs it. And so we're able to address all areas of development and if a parent has any concerns in any area, they should call their local early intervention program. So it was really nice when the early intervention specialists were able to come and kind of talk to me. And it really has taken a load off my mind. It's a service that's out there to help make your kids as well as they can be. So I don't feel so alone. Yeah. The whole importance of early intervention is to catch things before they become too much of a problem and so involved. For Mikkel, for her interaction skills, she has really low tolerance for interacting with other people besides her mother because people are unpredictable and so we use play as a modality to reach her and to expand her, her sensory skills. Mikkel was born at 33 weeks due to complications of HELP syndrome and spent just over seven weeks in newborn intensive care. She doesn't like loud noises or to be challenged. If you look at her wrong, she cries. We see Angela once a month. We see a play specialist twice a month. Um, we see speech and language once a month. And she goes to a little gym to work on other sensory out in the community once a month. Early intervention has changed our life and our household and made us be more aware of things that Mikkel is dealing with and to help her become a better two-year-old. It's teaching us to work with her in our own home environment. For us, having early intervention in our home has been one of the best things ever. <laughs> Smith wasn't really on the right, same track as most kids his age, and I didn't really know because it's my first, but I was kind of weary when he was about six months old is when my pediatrician said, okay, we need to get you some help. I got introduced to Easter Seals. I got a physical therapist with Easter Seals. I got a vision therapist, a occupational therapist, and a developmental specialist, so I got it all. I like it because it helps me think of all these different things I can be doing with Smith, and it's a huge support system that is really involved and really um, nice to have the Easter Seals program and all of the help that I've received because of it has been so beneficial to my life, to Smith's life, to my husband's life. There you go. <laughs> There's the smile. The first two years of a child's life are extremely important. That's when, the, that's when major developmental milestones need to be reached uh, in order to have them move forward and reach other developmental milestones in their life. The first three years of life are where the, the most growth happens in your brain, in your body, in, your, in all of your systems in general. And the brain is so plastic and so elastic and it changes so quickly that there's so much information that can be assimilated. So as the child is growing already, if you make small changes, they make huge differences in development over time. The whole? Yeah. <laughs> Dustin has spina bifida, and so he doesn't feel his legs from the knee down. We've, we've never really d done traditional crawl. It's more scooting on his belly, um, and he's not walking yet. He definitely is much more mobile than he would be otherwise. I mean, with their help we've got him to sit up on his own which he didn't do you know when just we were trying to work with him ourselves sit up on his own roll over crawl around on the floor you know in his own way he's much more mobile and he does a whole lot more things physically he's more active than he would be if just we were trying to work with him on our own <laughs> Good job.
Melody has Down syndrome. She was born July 2008. Probably when she was about three months old, we had someone come into our home and started to help us with the physical therapy because we knew that because of the Down syndrome, she'd be at least twice as slow as a typically developing child. Yeah, whatever is typical you. for you guys. Okay. Is going to be um, the most well, Two really nice people came in, a service coordinator and then a physical therapist. I get so much better help with them coming in the home, seeing where she is, what her environment's like. And I think it helps the therapist as well because they can see all of those things. Several, if not all, are my friends and they're Melody's friends and you can sense that they care. After he was born, they told me he might have Down syndrome. They have an early intervention specialist there who came and talked to me. And I was so excited when I found out that there was an early intervention program right here in Provo. They come to my house. And so I don't have to worry about loading up Alex and driving in the car to somewhere. I don't have to worry about finding babysitters for my other kids or trying to drag them along and keep them under control <laughs> while still trying to deal with you know, learning what I need to learn seeing what I need to see. And I think it really helped Alex too. He was in familiar surroundings. Yeah, okay, there's a new person here, but mom's here, my toys are here. He, it's a familiar situation. So even though we're, we're trying to get him to do something he doesn't know how to do or doesn't want to do, it helps that it's a new, it's, you know, it's something he knows. So yes, it's okay, I can, <laughs> I'll be okay, even though I'm trying something different. I think any child who consistently is not meeting their developmental milestones in an ideal world should receive early intervention therapy. If a parent wants to give their child every opportunity to have a fulfilling life and be as engaged with their environment and move forward, I can't imagine that one wouldn't seek what early intervention has to offer.